which is why the city burned. So I don't want to talk about Baltimore. There's nothing I can do about it. What I do want to talk about is gay marriage. And the reason I do want to talk about it is because it's a very big topic, number one. Number two, the Supreme Court is deciding this as we speak. And number three, even the Twisted Sisters at CNN are reporting the following headline. And here is the headline from the Twisted Sisters at at CNN. Supreme Court Justice is Skeptical of Redefining Marriage. That's the headline. It's very easy to understand. They're not responding to the pressure groups. They're not responding to guilt. But the, uh, the Supreme Court itself... We're divided, of course, over the constitutionality of gay marriage. And you know you're going to have the libs like uh, the clear libs, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was never, ever qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Never. The woman was a diehard leftist fanatic, former chief counsel for the ACLU. Never should she have been made. uh, Anyway, you know she's for it, along with the other liberals, right? But uh, the other side is always going to say no. So there's always the swing voters, right? Justice Anthony Kennedy is the court's pivotal vote. And he seems to be swinging against uh, gay marriage. Chief Justice Roberts, who shocked everyone with his swing vote to uphold Obamacare, remember that? Is this time apparently leaning more closely to conservative justices. Now, the arguments for and against gay marriage unfurled inside a packed courtroom Tuesday with one loudmouth protester even interrupting the arguments from within. Of course, they can't keep their mouths shut. You know, the leftists think that it's their right to interfere with everybody's life. But the question on Tuesday centered around the definition of marriage itself, period, and whether the decision to authorize or ban gay marriage should be left to voters in individual states or decided by the judicial system. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you my opinion right from the front so you don't think I'm sitting on the fence. I am a sexual libertarian. I've said that for many years now. It's a term I defined so you understand where I'm coming from. But with gay marriage, I oppose it completely because I say this, and I've said it, I'm very consistent on this. I said I'm a sexual libertarian for years. I said, do as you will, face que voudra, to use a French phrase that I learned from my good friend Rabelais. Do as you will, just leave me alone, number one. And number two, leave the children alone. Don't mess with the children's heads. Children are malleable. Children don't know what they are. They don't know what to think. That's why they're called children. Adults are supposed to teach children how to behave. Take a look at Baltimore. No fathers, no mothers. So it's the same with regard to social mores as it is with moral mores. And I believe that the children should be left alone because this confuses them. So I'm, I'm opposed to uh, gay marriage for that reason. It's that simple. I didn't say I'm opposed to people being gay. If you're gay, good luck to you. That's what you want to be. Who's going to tell? What, are you going to care what I think anyway? What's the difference what I think? What is the difference what I think if that's what you are doing? What do you care what I think? You, why should you care what I think? You don't care anyway what anyone thinks. We live in a society where everyone does what they want. But now you're demanding that society reaffirm what you want society to reaffirm. While most of society opposes gay marriage, as do all cultures on planet Earth. There is not a religion on Earth that supports gay marriage. You're going to tell me Islam supports it? No. You're going to tell me what Buddhism does because you don't understand Buddhism? Buddhism is is a traditional religion that opposes gay marriage. Don't tell me about Buddhism or in county. Hinduism opposes gay marriage. Judaism opposes gay marriage. So Christianity? What is Christianity's in favor of gay marriage? Where? There's a case here in San Francisco of an archbishop who has the guts to stand up to the uh, vehement, vehement hatred of Catholics in the city who are doing the bidding of God knows whom by ripping them to shreds. I mean, he's making them into Jesus. And he's 100% right. What he's saying is the Catholic Church opposes gay marriage, and the Catholic Church views marriage as between a man and a woman, end of, end of story. And he's trying to impose some moral values on uh, some of the adherents in the Catholic schools and the Catholic Church. And for that, he's being torn apart. My position is very clear on the archbishop. Either you're a Catholic or you're not. And if you don't like Catholicism, become an Episcopalian. And if Episcopalianism is too rigid for you, then become a a Reformed Jew where you can do whatever you want. 
That's all. You can tell Woody Allen jokes and claim, claim you're religious. So without getting into gay bashing, which I will not permit on this show, I'm not going to go into, you know, I, I just, uh, my, some of my best friends are gay. I'm not going to say that. I've had gay friends in my life. I don't currently have any because I have no friends right now. And I, I, mut I discriminate equally against everyone. I have no friends. I live alone, basically. I have a few people I talk to, and it's me and a dog. There was a time I had a very close friend in the family when the children were very young who was gay, who, who I let babysit the children, by the way. I didn't have cameras in the house worrying about it. I used to joke with him. I used to joke. We'd go out and have the, the he was a very nice guy. He would babysit, <laughs> he'd babysit the kids, and I would say, you know, we caught you on the camera. And he would laugh hysterically. I mean, that's the kind of friendship I had. We had an open friendship. That's why I never bothered anybody. So don't think that I'm a homophobe because I'm not. And I'll go back even farther in time if you want me to. When I was young, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, rather, in Queens, New York, one of the group, I, I don't remember his name, became gay or uh, you know, said, decided he had become gay. No one ridiculed him and made fun of him. No one called him a sissy behind his back. In fact, he was so tough he could beat most of us up. <laughs> he was on the macho side. He's a big, strapping guy who decided that he liked men. So that was it. We all sort of went our own way. I don't know where he, I think he died eventually from something else, nothing to do with that, but it wasn't an issue. It was what it was. I lived in a big city. People did a lot of things that they wanted to do. So now the country is deciding to redefine marriage. That's what it comes down to. And a lot of gay people, I think, even are against gay marriage, incidentally. You don't know that, but many gays oppose gay marriage almost for the same reasons I do. And I don't understand for the life of me, well, I do understand completely what this is about. This is about redefining society. And uh, that's why this is being heard before the Supreme Court. And I've given you my position. We see the Supreme Court justices are skeptical of redefining marriage. I will have for you in this hour where the 2016 candidates stand. You can pretty much figure out where they are on this. And uh, I'll read you their positions on it. And uh, you'll decide for yourself what you want to think. And uh, we're going to play some of the sound from the Supreme Court. In fact, let's start with John Roberts, the man who shocked the world by backing Obamacare in clip 29. My question is, you're not seeking to join the institution, you're seeking to change what the institution is. The fundamental core of the institution is the opposite sex relationship, and you want to introduce into it a same-sex relationship. Now, he is, he is the man who gave us Obamacare, remember? It seems like he's pretty clear on his position, and this is him speaking, by the way, it's not in translation. And we have now the female lawyer Mary Bonuato arguing for gay marriage in clip 28. Let's hear her position. The intimate and committed relationships of same-sex couples, just like those of heterosexual couples, provide mutual support and are the foundation of family life in our society. Yet the legal commitment, responsibility, and protection that is marriage is off limits to gay people as a class. The stain of unworthiness that follows on individuals and families contravenes the basic constitutional commitment to equal dignity. Does anyone understand what she said? Uh, completely. Uh, Robert, do you get it? Jim, do you follow it? Robert says yes. I'm not sure I know what she's talking about. No one is saying it's illegal to be gay. So far as I know, no one is arguing against that. And as far as the inheritance and other issues and you know, decisions upon a, an individual's death. I think we already have on the books laws in most states about these things that you don't have to be married. You can assign it to anybody. Isn't that true? I forget what it's called. But there's, a, there's an assignation of this that is on the books. You don't really need to be married to have the right to inheritance. You don't have to be married to have the right to uh, determine whether an individual is, uh, let us say, the plug is pulled on them if you want to make it as vulgar as that. I think I'll go vulgar. Partnership. What's domestic partnership? Right. Sorry, I didn't know the, the the jargon for it. I come from another time. Not domestic partnership. I'm no. In my day, either you were married or you weren't married. There was a thing called common law marriage in my day. Some people lived in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, were commonly more law married. They lived in shabby apartments. 
with oil cloth on the floor, and the floor was cockeyed. So when a dog urinated on the floor, the, the urine ran down from the kitchen into the living room. Now, that's all. I, they were the only people I knew who had domestic partnership were, were like that, were that, like that. They weren't even gay. I'm telling you, a guy who worked for my father. It was Louie and the Monkey. He once met a woman in the bar in Hamilton Corn, and they, had, they shacked up together. But they were, their floors were cro crooked, and they had oil cloth on the floor. And they had a little Boston Terrier. And I swear to God, when the dog relieved himself on the floor, it ran down. You know what apartments cost in that dump now? I can't believe it. Williamsburg's a hot name, but a dump near the, the Trun's meat plant. You could die going over the Kosciuszko Bridge in the summer. You needed, you could almost die going, but they don't have it there anymore. Now it's all clean and everything's fashionable. 